hey what's up guys welcome to my channel and today in this video we are going to look at some important aspects of live wire components specifically around accessing properties of our components through javascript and certain security concerns which we should be aware of while we are building our components and our applications using livewire so you need to understand that every livewire component which we have on our application the data is also available on the browser the reason for this is that livewire is basically creating all the components which are behind the scenes and alpine js component now if you're not familiar with the term alpine js i would say just do a google search it is basically a javascript framework yes yet another framework but it is very lightweight and the whole purpose of this framework is to allow you to write minimal code to get a lot of cool features however the idea here is to explain what livewire does under the hood so as i said every property of a livewire component is available on the browser but that what i mean is let's just say i create a variable called livewire now livewire exposes an object called livewire and i will do first because we may have multiple instances okay and that's the way you know, the api is now i have a livewire variable what can i do with it so let's say i have this thing as my title right so if i come over here and do title it says it is empty but it did say it's an empty string if i do something in the title and if i enter now can you see my javascript without even refreshing the page was able to fetch the information which was typed in why because i'll show you the flow so that you know those who are watching this video in between they should feel a little comfortable so right now i'm in the to do's component so obviously to do item is not the correct one but to do list is what we are looking at and to do list has a property called title it's a public property so that variable is available as a javascript property as well and because this title variable is wired into this text field using wire model whatever changes we do over here is also being reflected in the javascript component as well and that is the reason why we are able to fetch that information we can run any kind of thing on this particular alien gth sorry right any kind of javascript function on top of it and we can also do something like um h2 let's just say we'll do now this is a little bit of alpine dollar wire this is title dot length so any javascript expression which is possible in on the console can be added over here and if i now refresh let us get the live wire version okay and right now it is empty checking live wire function can you see it is right now doing a live reload and obviously this particular thing doesn't make a network request why because this is all javascript and we are also able to tap in to that through our php thing so this is the flexibility that we get okay we can also because these are javascript variables we can also set them through javascript so for example those of you who don't know you know i can execute anything through console right so i can do alert and this comes up i can do you know window dot something something right and the javascript works which basically means if i do something like my title can you see it changes and if i add it also adds it to the 
list of the date uh, of the to dos. Why? Because I am able to interact with the title property through JavaScript. Now, this basically means any Alpine JS or JavaScript based code that we have written would be able to mutate the data which is there on the component, which is nice, but there are certain security concerns which you may feel and hence it is important for us to know what are those security concerns and you need to be aware of it and you need to ensure that your code is secure enough and there it is not falling for those issues which can eventually happen. So let's understand that. To demonstrate this particular thing, I will create a new component live wire component called to do view i'll create a new route as well and i have named it as to do view because we want to go to that particular route why don't we do a little bit of linking through our to do item so this is my inline component <clears throat> i would need the id so maybe what i can do is this is id and because i already get the to do i can do something like this and now let's refresh and see if things are working and it does so if I click over here, it takes me to to do two, which is fine. It's an empty thing because we haven't done anything about it. So let's like write that code. So we have this whole markup, which I have just you know, pasted. We have a row where we are showing an H1 with the, you know, the task in the H1 saying view to do. And we have a form with an input field, which is you know, a text field wired to the task. Now, because we have a basic model in place, why don't we open up our to-do view and make some code changes to support that particular view. So the first thing is we will need a few public properties. So I'll have public ID, dollar task, okay. And we have a function over here called handle submit. So we will have that as well. Okay, I'm not doing anything right now over here. And obviously, because there's a route model binding, I'll have a mount function. And based on our previous video, we saw how we can do bulk assignment, right? So we will do that over here. If you, are, you haven't gone through it, a quick recap is, you know, if you want to assign multiple attributes or properties with a particular value, what I can do is this fill dollar to do only id task and it will what it will try to do is take this id property and map it to id and the task property map it to id uh, task okay and because we have a route model binding maybe i'll also do something like this okay and with this in place, let's try and refresh. And we can see based on the route uh, model binding, we are able to pull the to do. I'm showing the text over here and it is route model binded as well. But now the security concern, let's recap. We have an ID property over here, correct? If I do something like, let's say to do equals this dot ID, I'm basically trying to load the to do. And I'm assigning the task to the property task and you know which is the to-do task and then I'm saving it. So what does that mean basically? If I click over here, updated, if I hit enter, it changes the task and it also changes in the database. But as I said, because everything is JavaScript, it is possible 
that I will do livewire dot id it is two so I can set it to one okay and one is go shopping or let's just say three okay it is better now if I hit enter route parameter is two what should happen if I hit enter can you see the third got updated which is very scary you shouldn't have done that if I hit enter again can you see it is constantly sending the ID as 3 instead of 2 although what we had loaded was a completely different ID and this is possible only because as we said every live wire component is also an alpine component so any change in the data property will mean the underlying data changes and hence we need to safeguard it we need to in a way check whether the user has the authorization to update that property or not we can use the laravel's authorization permit um, you know features to do that for example uh, you can have your you know, policies of models and stuff like that i mean there are multiple ways you know where acls are included in laravel and you can read up a little more in the documentation this is not the right video but it is important that you safeguard those things now a quick fix for these kind of problems is also available using php attributes we can do something like locked by that what will happen is if i change try to change rather i'll do this live wire id is 2 okay if i make it 1 and then i change can you see it throws an exception it says cannot update logged property id so if you know that there are certain properties which are not supposed to change then you should ensure that you have this attribute in place this is one very quick and handy way of locking those features you should also know that any model by default is also logged which means if you are kind of you know populating a model into the component then be rest assured that it cannot be changed it is not mutatable sorry mutable and this is basically i'm saying from the whatever is there in the docs so if i go over here i'm sure you should be aware what we are talking about so security concerns if you see i showed you how the update can be a problem right um, the model bindings are in place this is fine right this is the example of the authorization where you, know, you can check whether the current user is authorized to update this post or not stuff like that and this is the locked property which we just saw and as it says eloquent models and locking when an elegant model is assigned to a live wire component property live wire will automatically lock the property and ensure id isn't changed so those basic stuff are already taken care, taken care by the package but yeah it is important that you know about it one more important aspect that you need to be aware of is the live wire component will you know hydrate and dehydrate the models between the between the requests from the server to the client and from the client to the server by that what i mean is every live wire component is first transferred into a json thing and then sent to the server and from server it gets a json and i mean it gets the object and it turns it into a json now this hydration and dehydration are, they they do happen you know interchangeably and so at some point it is quite possible that some of the properties of the server will come into the front end for example you may see stuff like this and it is quite common i will show you um if i don't have this inspect can you see there are snapshots and this in this snapshot i can see that okay the model is app models to do so it does a kind of you know, shows reveal certain information about your app architecture which 
is definitely something which is not a very good thing. And for that, what you can do is use something like in the app service provider relation morph do post. So yeah, this is certain aspects which you need to be aware of once you do that, right? Um, it will start showing this instead of you know the entire namespace, which in a way is a good thing. And also, yeah, I mean, you know, you need to be aware that certain aspects of the eloquent model will not be preserved between requests. By that, what I mean is, let's say in the mount method, you selected specific fields using the select query. You only select the title and the content. And then you did something and you, you know, there is a way or something happened due to which the you know, the to do is going to be rehydrated at this point, this will not work because if the to do model is rehydrated, right, then it will not expect this select query. It will pick up whatever is the model by default. And for that to work properly, we have something called as computed properties, but computed properties is something which I'm not going to demo right now. I will handle that particular aspect of the package in a later video but yeah you need to be aware and hence i'm showing that in subsequent video i will show you exactly what computer properties are but yeah that's about it guys that's what i wanted to cover as part of the security aspects of livewire what you should be aware of what you should know and what are some of the things which you need to take care when you are using the properties coming from the client and you are trying to save it to the database because every property which is on Livewire, which are public properties, they are really public in nature, which means they are user inputs. And hence, you need to do all the sanity checks like you would do in any typical form request being handled. So yeah, thanks for watching, guys. If you like this video, then do click on the thumbs up icon and don't forget to subscribe to my channel.